What's good gamers, Akalon here, and of course, welcome back to each and every one of you. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are once again dealing with the AAA industry, and uh, we're revisiting uh, an item that I've been talking about for a couple of months now. Uh, remember when I said to you when the first layoffs in the gaming industry started to happen that this is not the end, this is merely the beginning? Well, I was not wrong. Take two, the giant publisher behind Rockstar's GTA and Red Dead Redemption 2, even one, <laughs> I'm keeping track, but yeah, Take-Two is pretty big, right? It's one of the bigger AAA publishers out there. They just announced that they are letting go about 5% of all of their developers, their entire workforce. Now, that's 579 workers, which means that this company sits around 10,000 people strong. That is a massive, massive company. Well, looky here. If it isn't Mr. Faucius. What's up, son? Subscribe. Of course, I want you all to know that this is not the end. The, this is going to continue happening. This is only the first round of layoffs. Most of these companies have entered round one. Expect to see more layoffs as the year continues and as next year rolls in. Why? Because each and every one of these AAA companies completely misunderstands the reason why they're not making as much money as they used to. All of them, this is now, we heard Microsoft say this, we had Blizzard say this, we had EA say this, and now we also have Take-Two, and Ubisoft, by the way, said this. So we have the big five, effectively, that all said the same thing. There's a slowdown in the gaming industry. Now, anyone that is half awake and kind of knowing what's going on looks at the gaming industry and goes, wait a second, there's a lot of games that's selling super well. What are you guys on about? Like, there's so many games coming out. Pal World, Howl Divers, Baldur's Gate 3 last year, uh, Cyberpunk, Phantom Liberty. All of these games sold out. They made crazy amounts of cash and they were good. You just had Mana Lords, one of the best RTS games I've ever played in my life. It releases on the 26th. You have Mana Lords that have just become one of the most wishlisted games on Steam ever. So clearly the gaming industry isn't slowing down. There are plenty of games that is making a boatload of money. But the developers, the, the publishers, the suits do not understand why this is happening. So allow me to explain what is going on. Number one, we live in an era where AAA studios have become hyper-specialized and not to the point of making great games. There is a difference. Larian Studios, for example, is a hyper-specialized studio insofar as they do one type of game and they only do that. They make CRPGs and they only ever work on one game at a time. As a studio, yes, this limits their potential earnings because you could make far more money if you have more teams making more games. But that's not the model that Larian shoots for. Larian hires very conservatively. They only hire what they need. And because they've become such experts at making these games, they know exactly what they need in order to make these games. And they're in no rush. So unlike most of the AAA studios that literally just hire, 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 because the idea is more developers means more games more faster, Larian Studios doesn't go for that approach. They hyper-specialized, and that's made them experts in that field. The AAA studios, like Take-Two, like Activision, Blizzard, like Microsoft, they don't do the same kind of specialization. Instead, they hyper-specialize in what we call cash cows, because they have a couple of franchises that basically prop up their entire offering. They don't do many smaller games to try and keep themselves afloat. They don't really expand their offerings outside of a couple, sometimes just one, but in most cases they have one or two franchises that basically their entire business model is hitched to. Now, you may say, but Aklon, how is that even possible? And you would be right to ask that question. If all you're doing is selling your game for $60, that's not a very good business model if literally everything is, is, is baked 
into one or two major offerings with a workforce of around 10,000 people. Larian Studios does not have that many people working for it, so it can just ask $60 for a game and release a game every five or six years and still make decent money with it. For Take-Two and other AAA studios, this is where microtransactions enter the fray. They need to make games that can continuously be monetized. So, live service games. You all know this is the buzzword about, you know, a decade ago, this really started to take flight. Five years ago, every single AAA executive was basically creaming themselves at the opportunity to build this live action service gaming ecosystem, if you will. But we now know that that is not a sustainable business model. When they say that the gaming industry is slowing down, this is what they're referring to. Not that people are not buying video games. Remember, these guys don't bank on people buying their games. That's a nice cash influ uh, like a cash injection during a single quarter, but it doesn't keep the shareholders happy quarter after quarter, which is what they all rely on. But here's the problem. When you have one game that charges uh, players money continuously for new content, players will pay for that if they like the game. But what happens when you have 10, 15, 20 games on the market and every single one of these games is trying to extract extra funds from their players on a monthly basis? How long before gamers not only no longer wish to pay for their games continuously every single month, but more importantly, just don't have the money to keep paying for all of these games every single month. You want to play GTA online? Cool, go do that, but also be willing to fork out quite a lot of cash in order to unlock all of the missions and really get all of your value out of the online experience. You want to play something like Call of Duty? Hey! You have to keep buying all of these monthly uh, battle passes and bullshit like that. You want to play World of Warcraft? Great. That's a $15 uh, subscription right there, but then also cash shop and all the rest on top of it. Every single game that comes out now has these added extras that's just charged onto it because, remember, they need to keep the shareholders happy quarter after quarter. And much like tipping culture, where people in America specifically have just reached the end of tipping culture. I'll tell you guys a very interesting little thing here. Uh, uh, two weeks ago, I, I'm going to the, uh, the the Starbucks at the mall close to my house. I'm in the mood for some Starbucks, so I go, I buy a coffee there, and they have built into their system as you have to pay, right? So tap with your card to pay for your coffee. There, There's a screen there that says, would you like to add a tip? And as the screen pops up, I'm not really paying attention, so I'm still getting my card out. And the barista, or the lady behind the till, really, stood there, reached over to where the tip is, and hit the red button, which cancels it and goes to the next screen. They literally, and I spoke to a friend of mine and said, yeah, they always do that. The people working at Starbucks goes, yeah, we get paid every month. And by the way, that's not actually something that happens all the time. So waiters, for example, don't get paid in South Africa. We do tip those, but the baristas do get paid. And so they don't ask for a tip. They they just keep, you know, put that away. So South Africa, at least in that sense, still kind of based, right? But I've heard the stories about Americans just having to tip literally for everything. Much like tip culture has reached tipping point and people are tired and basically just burnt out on the whole thing. Live service is doing the same thing. People just don't want to keep paying for their games every single year. This is why so many of these games uh, that just charge a straight price out of the box is doing so much better. Because gamers can just buy it once and then play the living out of it. Cyberpunk is basically replayable at infinitum. The same with Baldur's Gate 3. The same with Pal World, Helldivers. All of these games are doing phenomenally well and you don't have to spend money if you don't want to. The games just offer a good, clean amount of fun, right? Um, of, I'm, I'm aware that Helldivers does have a cash shop, but it is a multiplayer online game pretty much always going. So I understand that they do want to make a little bit of extra money, but from what I understand, you don't have to spend any money in the cash shop if you do not want. So that is number one. That is the slowdown that they're referring to. And yes, I do expect this entire business model to crash down 
we're basically going to have the last full theory in full effect here. At some point, there's going to be one company that's still holding out, holding the bag, as they're the only company still with a live action, a live service game that no one wants to be playing. But that's not the only reason, ladies and gentlemen. That's one of the reasons, and that is definitely one of the bigger reasons, but there is another far more nefarious reason for why the AAA space is just going to die. Shortly, AI, obviously, I expect more layoffs to happen as AI matures, but we're nowhere near that point just yet, so it's nothing to worry about just yet. Now, the biggest reason after the whole, you know, that I just spent when it's talking about the biggest reason for why the AAA space is dying and is consistently dying is woke. It's the fact that every single one of these companies is taking giant amounts of ESG funds in order to make their games. And when you do take ESG funds, you have to adhere to ESG rule sets, which means the EI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and more and more recently it also includes bridge which takes dei to its max no longer can you pretend to be diverse you now have to be diverse and inclusive in every aspect of your business and that's the big one that's the big problem because so many games are now coming out and so many game companies are making all of these esg moves and consistently they're seeing their favorite franchises completely implode as gamers simply turn off. And we know, by the way, that these things are not working. We have evidence of this. I am I made a video about this entire thing, but I'll quickly share it with you guys. Yeah, you have it. BlackRock. BlackRock is one of the key companies behind Bridge, DEI, and ESG. And BlackRock CEO freaked out in a recent investors call where he basically said that people are lying and spreading misinformation about BlackRock's agenda. And that is the reason why BlackRock is losing billions of dollars every single quarter, because people believe all the lies and the misinformation. But it isn't lies. It isn't misinformation. What it is, is evidence and proof that the ordinary human does not want this. They don't care make good products, make good video games, and we will buy it. If you push your BS into our video games, if you keep pushing your politics into our video games, if you turn, you keep turning your video games into actual political propaganda, gamers are not going to buy that. Gamers don't want to deal with that. So increasingly, when companies stand up against this, people start supporting those companies that are standing up against this. And isn't a part of this. People are starting to support mom and pop stores because, well, they're not the ones going super woke on all this nonsense. So if the BlackRock, the company, and these companies are the most powerful corporations on earth, BlackRock and Vanguard, if these companies are suffering losses as a result of ESG, according to themselves, lies and misinformation about ESG and what ESG stands for, then you kind of know right, that this is backfiring and you can stop feeling afraid. You can speak up because you are not alone. You are the majority and the majority of people have simply had enough. They don't care about any of this anymore. The games industry, of course, will not understand this. They cannot understand this because from their position, this is free money. ESG money comes at a much lower interest rate than your normal bank loans to make video games with. So they're going to continue to lay off people. They're going to continue to implode until either one, they wake up or they completely die. It will be sad because Take-Two and Rockstar actually do make some of the best RPGs on the market ever. I mean, Red Dead Redemption 2 is just a phenomenal game. But sometimes the old must die for the new to thrive. And hey, you know, if this is the price we have to pay for a better a gaming industry and a better gaming market, then hey, so be it. Ladies and gentlemen, like if you di liked, dislike if you didn't. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, be kind to each other, be good to each other. And I'll see all of you in the next one.